Witam Państwa serdecznie, Błażej Hrabkowicz. Jesteśmy na 25. edycji festiwalu Camera Image w Bydgoszczy. And our guest is a legendary editor and the recipient of Camera Image Award for the editor with unique visual sensibility, Paul Hirsch. Welcome. Thank you very much. How are you? Everything okay? Dziękuję. Proszę bardzo. <laughs> so, uh, before we start talking about your particular works with uh, particular films with particular directors, I wanted to ask you because a couple of years ago here in Bydgoszcz, uh, I, uh, I had the opportunity to talk to Walter Murch and he talked a lot about his not only technical view on editing, but a philosophical view on editing, how he feels that this is the editing shapes the idea uh, of the film. What is your approach here? Do you think that editing is uh, do you view editing as uh, creating a structure of the film in a narrative sense or also creating a sense idea, philosophy of the film? Well, first of all, Walter is a much more intellectual person than I am. I tend to um, try to simplify uh, my approaches is, is um, not really able to be expressed in terms of a philosophy, I don't think. Uh, I believe that editing is an interpretive art. Uh, we don't start with a blank canvas the way a, a painter does or a blank page like a writer, but we're given materials and then we're asked to interpret that material and make it into something else the way a uh, musician plays a piece written by a different composer, you know, written by a composer. So it's an interpretive art as opposed to an original, like a playwright or a composer or a painter who starts with nothing. So, so therefore, the interpretation becomes my understanding of what the director's intention was. We start with a screenplay, which is the plan, and he shoots material, he, she shoots material that comes to me and as I understand his intention, I put the film together in that way. And of course, the summation of all the choices that I make becomes my style, I suppose. I have a certain aesthetic which I follow, which guides me in, in the choices that I make. Do you think this aesthetics is definable? Uh, are you able to define it, or do you don't? You, or maybe you don't need it. You just feel that it is there. Um, well, a lot of the a lot of the choices I make are based on uh, my background in music, and I feel that editing bears a relationship to music in that we are responsible for the time that the audience is listening or watching our work. So uh, unlike a book, a book doesn't have to worry about time, a painting, an architect, you know, an architect doesn't have to worry about time. Dance, music, and editing all take place over a defined period of time. So it's my responsibility on the film to try to get the best possible version of the film and have the film find its own length so that it doesn't feel too long and it doesn't feel too short. It doesn't go too fast at times, it doesn't go too slow. Length and speed are two different issues. You can have a long movie that's very fast or a, s a slow movie that's very short. Um, and they're two different issues, you know, but this is what I'm concerned with and clarity. Do the story and characters to yes, define in which moments uh, the film has to go faster, in which moments the film has to go slower? Is it like that? It all depends. I mean, there are so many variations. Of course, you have to be sensitive to the actor's performances and whether the internal psychological state of the character work. You have to you make it all work together uh, so that it feels as if you're creating a single reality. So there's a lot of components to it, but none of these uh, aspects to editing is ever articulated in my mind when I'm working. I just react without analyzing and 
uh, articulating to myself what I'm doing, essentially. So something it's feels too. It's more intuitive. In it's intuitive. If I if something feels too long, I shorten it. If something feels too too short, I lengthen it. If it feels it's in the wrong place, I move it. You know. So I'm not I'm not I'm just reacting as if interpreting. You know, listening. If I'm a dancer, listening to music. Um, so it's it's more immediate. I'm in the moment. I'm not standing outside and, and thinking about what I'm doing, you know. Editing is a bit of a misnomer because actually much of the time that we spend, especially most of the time we spend on the first cut is not editing but building. We're building, we're taking the pieces from what we're given and building a structure that becomes the movie eventually. In terms of story and characters dictating the aesthetics or uh, the structure uh, of the film, uh, your, your most famous collaboration is with uh, Brian De Palma, and uh, especially if a blowout comes to mind that we have a guy who is a sound uh, engineer, and you created along with Brian De Palma, you created a sort of parallel sound and visual landscape in the film that really informs the way we interpret the story. Tell us a bit more about the concept here and your work with Brian De Palma in the editing room. Uh, what, what, what is your, what was your uh, process? It was a long collaboration, so... Well, I was very fortunate to meet Brian when I did. I met him through my brother, my brother Chuck Hirsch, who produced a film called Greetings, which Brian directed. Chuck and Brian co-wrote the screenplay and Chuck produced, Brian directed, and I was just learning how to edit at the time. I was cutting trailers, and I cut the trailer for Greetings. And I met Brian, he liked me, we hit it off, and Greetings was sort of a success. They got the money to do a sequel to it that was entitled Son of Greetings, you know, like Son of Frankenstein, but it was Son of Greetings. <laughs> and uh, it was eventually retitled Hi Mom. It was the first film starring Robert De Niro. I was 23 years old. I didn't know anything. But I didn't know I didn't know anything. So I thought, yeah, I can do this. I can do it. I didn't know what I was getting into, but... Maybe, so, maybe in the beginning of your career you have to be a bit uh, arrogant and cocky to make it. <laughs> I thought that if you made every scene perfect, then the movie would be perfect. It doesn't work that way. But I learned, it was the very first mistake that I made and a very important lesson to learn. But anyway, Brian and I uh, hit it off and he hired me on the first five films that I did. Uh, Hi Mom, Sisters, Phantom of the Paradise, Obsession, and Carrie. And it wasn't until after I did Carrie that I worked for any other director and that was George Lucas on Star Wars. But working with Brian was very important because I was learning how to edit while I was working for him. And he was sort of learning at the same time. He was five years older than, he is five years older than I am. So he was in his 20s also when we started out. And um, he encouraged me and he, he gave me a lot of, he trusted me and he gave me a lot of um, autonomy. He gave me freedom to, to do what I wanted, and he would have adjusted it subsequently, of course. But it was very important for me as a young editor to have that, that empowerment and that freedom that he, that he trusted me with. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>